Missing, Obi-Wan was taken to a location on the Underground Jedi Railroad where he saw that a variety of other Jedi had survived the Purge, including Quinlan Vos. When he realised that Quinlan had survived, Kenobi was extremely happy and even allowed a small smile to wash over his face, something which was very difficult for him by this point in the timeline. He was still a broken man. But there's actually another reason that Obi-Wan was so happy about this, one that goes way back further in the timeline. So hit that subscribe button and let's break down the real reason why Obi-Wan was so happy that Quinlan Vos survived specifically. So the main reason that when Obi-Wan viewed the names on the wall of the Jedi safe house, he called out Quinlan's with such joy was because they were incredibly close friends during their time in the Jedi Order. They went through some absolutely terrifying and amazing experiences together, even having to be rescued by Qui-Gon Jinn together a few times. Coming into the Jedi Order, Quinlan Vos was one of the few Jedi who already had a strong connection to his parents. They were named Quian and Pethros Vos, and they were members of Clan Vos, who was the ruling clan on the planet Kifu. Initially, because of these deep ties to his family and homeworld, Vos's parents completely refused to give him up to the Jedi Order because that would cut him off from his responsibilities on his homeworld and sent him off to live in luxury on Coruscant. Because of this, the Jedi agreed to a compromise where Jedi Master Thom would become Quinlan's new master, but he would have to travel to Kifu to train him there for the early part of his life. Unfortunately, this agreement came to an end when both of Quinlan Vos's parents were violently murdered by Anzadi, one of the most terrifying and scary species to ever grace the galaxy. Being next in line to the planet Kifu, Quinlan's auntie became the new ruler and as her first act, she forced the young child to use his psychometry powers on his mother's medallion. This caused the young Quinlan to experience absolutely horrifying and traumatic images of his parents being killed and he was left in a state of shock for a very long time. Only his master Thom was eventually able to calm the boy down, but it was not easy. Knowing that Quinlan would never again be safe on his homeworld, especially with his auntie now being the ruler, he rushed the boy back to the Jedi Council and they agreed that he should go back into the regular Jedi training. Now, as a youngling, Quinlan trained alongside Jedi like Bantiran, Shyla, Siri Tachi, and most importantly of all, Obi-Wan Kenobi. The two soon became extremely good friends when Quinlan Vos fought in the Stark Hyperspace War alongside Kenobi, getting into very dicey situations together but always figuring a way out. After the war came to an end, Master Thom left Quinlan Vos for a while, leaving Quinlan and Obi-Wan with Qui-Gon Jinn on the planet Ragoon 6. There they had to complete a survival training mission together, which as you can guess was not going to be easy at all. As the mission went on, the two were acting like typical young boys showing off and trying to one-up each other. During this little contest between the two, Quinlan accidentally sent himself tumbling down a cliff into water, and Kenobi, being the good man he is, jumped in to try to rescue him. This was a horrible idea though because Kenobi was now also in big trouble and the water was only moments away from swallowing both of the boys up. Thankfully for both of them, Qui-Gon Jinn rushed onto the scene and called upon the Force to lift the two boys from the rapidly spiralling vortex which was taking them both under. This was yet another horribly traumatic experience for Quinlan Vos, and it even deeply affected Obi-Wan for quite a while after it happened. Shortly after this, Vos even admitted that as he was in the process of drowning, it seemed easier for him to just let go and surrender himself to a comfortable and very familiar darkness. This obviously connects back to that horrific experience where he was forced to use his psychometry to view his mother's death. To him, this was just another chapter in that same script all over again. Kenobi was likely reminiscing on these past events when he read Quinlan's name on the wall and how much they went through together as friends. To him, it was just a little glimmer of hope that the light in the galaxy hadn't fully gone out yet and that there could be others out there to continue on the legacy of the Jedi if he couldn't. As you can tell by now, Quinlan was a very dark and very troubled Jedi but he never let those past experiences consume him. Except for that one time, but we'll get into that later in the video. Later on, Quinlan was actually asked to participate in the Battle of Geonosis to rescue Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, but even despite his long-lasting and very close friendship with Kenobi, he declined to do so. He was dealing with far too much at the time of the incident and had to keep his mind on other business. Although, because of his friendship with Obi-Wan, he did send his apprentice, Aayla Sakura, to the arena. Now after this, Quinlan was transitioned into the role of a full-time spy, a double agent and a saboteur, which he had plenty of experience of with his time in the Order. In fact, you can even see Quinlan Vos on a spy mission on Tatooine in The Phantom Menace, and the reason he wasn't able to help Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan there was because he was on a mission that he could not afford to blow his cover on. Regardless, on one of these missions he was tasked with becoming a fake apprentice to Count Dooku and spying on him so that he could get the vital information about the Separatists back to the Republic. During the mission, however, Quinlan actually fell to the dark side for real because Dooku played into Vos's troubled and dark past. He knew that it was a weakness of Vos and pushed the exact right buttons to get him to release his rage and anger. During his time as a Dark Acolyte, Vos met up with his old friend Obi-Wan on the derelict spaceship known as the Tatavian IV, 
and they found themselves on the opposite sides of a raging conflict. Kenobi was extremely worried about his old friend and how far he had fallen, but by helping Kenobi to escape from Asajj Ventress, Quinlan had proven that he did still serve the Republic. Now, the two fought their way off the derelict ship together like old times, and the two Jedi jumped to the Rendili system in the core. What Quinlan didn't know though was that Master Sacy Tin was waiting for him in the Rendili system and imprisoned Quinlan as soon as he arrived there. In a way, Obi-Wan had just betrayed his oldest friend. This moment again probably weighed on his mind when he saw Quinlan's name on that wall in the safe house. Luckily for Quinlan though, the power to the prison hold where he was being held was lost, so he managed to escape and steal a starfighter, and instead of retaliating against the Jedi for taking him prisoner, he actually did something awesome. He joined up with his old friend Kenobi once again in order to help rescue Plo Koon and Jan Dodana from their capture. That's a nice little connection to the Rebel Alliance later on, and it's a great act from Quinlan Voss. Now, after this, Quinlan returned to Coruscant and begged the Jedi Council for their forgiveness and to believe that he really was still a servant of the Republic and not a chess piece of Count Dooku. Eventually, the Council believed Quinlan and they gave him some time to recover before reinstating him as a full general of the Grand Army of the Republic. At that point, Quinlan then does the mission we saw in the Clone Wars series to track down Zero the Hutt with Obi-Wan Kenobi. As you can probably tell from the episode, their relationship was a lot more sarcastic and colder than the one we've seen before, and Quinlan was way more laid back than he ever was, and Obi-Wan seemingly went in the opposite direction. As for how he actually survived the Jedi Purge, well, we don't actually know in canon, but in Legends he was left stranded in the harsh jungles of Kashyyyk when the order was given. His clone commander, Fey, eventually tracked him down and blasted him in the chest at point-blank range, but Quinlan was still able to survive. Thankfully, he was then able to meet back up with his son and wife and ensure that they were still safe. The same could not be said about many other Jedi in the galaxy on that day, sadly. All we know in canon is that he was on a list put together by the Grand Inquisitor and Darth Vader of the top priority Jedi targets that needed to be hunted down and killed. And considering Quinlan's name was on that wall, that may unfortunately be how they knew he was still alive. He left clear evidence that he wasn't swept up by the clones during Order 66 like all of the other Jedi, we also know that he is currently helping the safe house across the path to take in younglings and other force sensitives to keep them away from Palpatine's Project Harvester, which was his program started during the Clone Wars that captured force sensitive kids to turn them into Inquisitors. Maybe he's even helping Sid from the Bad Batch since she is known to have a regular contact with a Jedi. But tell me how you think he survived Order 66 in the comments down below. Maybe we'll even get some more information in Star Wars Jedi Survivor which is the follow up to Jedi Fallen Order. So that is the story of why Obi-Wan Kenobi was so happy to see Quinlan Voss's name specifically on the wall in the Jedi safe house in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Their long-standing friendship over the years and the fact that there were still good people out there looking to restore light to the galaxy. Hope you enjoyed that breakdown of Quinlan Voss and Obi-Wan's friendship over the years, and if you did, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching guys, really hope to see you in the next one. If you made it this far, say thank Mr. Quinlan.